For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure at it by your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's podcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 8.21, Settled the Score, where we are covering the novel Grave Peril. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Ow, ow! Woo! Last episode of Grave Peril. Yes. Last two chapters of Grave Peril. Yeah, last two. Chapter 38. Dresden dispatches security, and Bianca makes Dresden an offer. Complete forgiveness in his life in exchange for Susan. Harry declines, knowing it would be seen as an act of war. Bianca orders an attack, and in a quick decision, Dresden releases all the spirits who had died at the vampire's hands upon them. The ghosts destroy Bianca, the vampires, and the mansion, allowing for Dresden, Susan, and Justine to escape. I'd like to throw an addition into this episode, brought by Matt, who is a frequent guest of ours. He said something awesome in the Discord, and we're going to throw it into this episode, um, because this one hasn't come out yet. So I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't throw it into the last episode because it came out already. But um, Okay, we'll go with that. Sure. So Matt uh, brought up this really great um, allegory. Is that the word for it? I could be. Could be, <laughs> depending. Depending what you're If you read our Discord, you know what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, essentially, he was um, comparing the um, uh, way in which Harry took down Kravos as a werewolf, so to speak. Um, in an effort to protect Susan, and Susan came dressed to the ball as Little Red Riding Hood. Mm. And I really like that, because up until this point, I'd kind of never considered any good reason for, um, um, Susan came dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood, and I never really cared for why the reason was, because, you know, who the fuck cares? It was just just a costume, right? mad about her costume. Well, she wore glasses, that's stupid. (laughs) Little Riding Hood doesn't wear glasses, and neither does Susan. And in protest, Jessica left hers at work for two days and just went around blind. It was rough. Thump. Mm -hmm. To have the dent in the car to prove it. (laughs) <laughs> Anyways, so I thought it was very interesting that, yeah, Harry does actually take turning into a werewolf to defeat Kravos. Um, and we spoke about it, you know, for a bit in the last episode about, you know, that whole moment. But I thought it was, yeah, like, it actually does tie it in a lot better now why Susan went in her Little Red Riding Hood costume. And, oh, because Harry turned into the big bad wolf in the end. We didn't eat Susan. He ate the bad guy all up. Yeah. Uh, Kravos. Right. So, big props to Matt. To directly quote him here, he says, I like the parallels here. Originally, Susan was dressed as Little Red Riding Hood, and Leah threatened that the big bad wolf was going to eat her all up. And now Kravos is covered in red from the blood symbols he carved into himself, and Harry turns into a wolf to eat him all up. Dun, dun, dun. So, yes, it was nice. There you go. Susan wore this Little Red Riding Hood costume, and Leah threatened that the big bad wolf would come and get her. A big bad wolf but did she show wasn't, up. Though. But it was Harry and he was protecting her and it's all this do do do. So yeah, yes. good parallels. I like it, Matt. I like it a lot. Very nice, very mm-hmm. nice. Yes. Anyways, we'll back keep... to the past, future. Back to the past. Back to the past. Back to the past. Back to the chapter Come hang out in our Discord. All kinds of interesting insights and revelations and insults. Yeah, you'll <laughs> find a link to that on our website, macanellis.ca. Yeah. So we left off at the end of the last chapter with Bianca's last word of fire as in shoot not harry's normal deal yeah so uh yeah so we start off this chapter with him flinging up his shield and uh just holding off did they say what we got half a dozen a dozen mercenaries i'm not sure if it's specified um yeah but several people regardless it's not just like two guys there's a bunch of them was half dozen was a half dozen with like machine guns or whatever and harry just stands there with his shield up and one dozen vampires half a dozen armed men okay oh okay there you go so yeah i don't know about y'all i don't think i would fare that well against half a dozen machine guns just boom right harry does just fine yeah, well, and he, not only does the shield work really well, but the the fact is that his magic screws up the mechanisms of the guns, which is, you know... And okay. some of the guns backfire or just quit or, yeah. This guy's oozing magic right now. Yeah. I will say, though, before we get too deep into this chapter, what do you think is the most iconic visual from this book for you? Because when you think of Stormfront, I would imagine for most people it will be, you know, the lake house. Or maybe the mm-hmm. demon toad or something. But, you know, when you think of full moon, most people are going to have 
um, Marcone's property, I think. Or, yeah. Or just, you know, the moon in general Most or something. Most of the climactic you know, the forest, scenes whatever, right? are what's... Yeah. And obviously, you know, if you get something like, you know, changes, it's very easy to be like, okay, shit's needs so, obviously, you know? <laughs> like, but I was like, but for this one, for me, honestly, like, I just think of that, like, you know, just Harry and Justine ascending that staircase from, you know, a mansion that's already been partially burnt down and is, you know, got so many bodies in the basement. And for me, anyways, I just imagine this, you know, like, a yeah. typical, like, narrow basement and you're just like looking up at the light coming and you're just like okay that part go. yeah um not so much the same way i don't think as you've described definitely the party the fuego pyro fuego that yeah. is, that was i think the one i was gonna say because that's the big first where he's just like now you know this is coming right you know he's got to get out of this and save the day and do whatever um so yeah this one like the overall but not the same way I don't know, maybe my mind glosses over it a lot. I don't have strict pictures of Harry and Ducky boxers. <laughs> I think, you know, I don't know if I just couldn't do it I know, quite for me, it's like a cartoon I character. Can. I imagine Harry in one outfit and one outfit always. Even when Butcher's like, he's naked, he's in Ducky boxers, he's, he's in purple sweatpants. I'm just right. always Harry in a duster. Yeah, it's very hard to get away from that, right? Exactly. See, so, you know, it's kind of between the, the, the party being an inferno, mm -hmm. that moment there, and mm -hmm. near the end of this chapter where the, the imagery of all of the ghosts coming through the floor, like, it just reminds me of, like, the big Ghostbusters mm -hmm. moment, like, Yes. Where, mm -hmm. where the, the, the... Yeah. Everything just yeah, all... It's coming. going crazy. Well, yeah. I, I just... I think for me, typically, like, the things that makes me most hyped, I guess, when you... Like, I, I like to watch trailers a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll just rewatch trailers over and over and over again because I get so hyped by just, like, you know, like the... Holy shit! Oh my god! Like, yeah, like, go back and remember before you ever got to see the movie, you know? Like, I watch, like, you know, like, the trailers for, like, you know, like, the seventh and eighth Harry Potter movie or for, like, a couple Marvel movies or, like, my favorite movie, The Martian, right? Because it's just like, oh shit, like these horrible, terrible odds, and you're like, uh, the whole world stacked against you, or whatever like that, right? And they give you such, you know, heroic, inspiring music to Yeah, and, like, sometimes there's a narrator <laughs> who's just building it the hell up, or whatever like that, right? And, like, for me, like, it's that same thing, like, when you've got, like, Harry Dresden, like, just, like, ascending the basement, or whatever like that, and he's, like, for all intents and purposes, all alone. He's got Justine, but, like, yeah, but there was never more a to stay down at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, she's really not there to aid him. He's still trying to protect her. She doesn't come up yeah. with him, yeah, so. But anyways, yeah, he's like, it's just always him. just moments like that where I'm just like who's gonna die today mm -hmm. then obviously he doesn't but one day he will right definitely will just but not in the books i think chapter or not, i think book 23 <laughs> <laughs> book 23 how hilarious would it be though if he does keep harry alive at the end of all of this and then like like i don't know jim butcher's like 94 and on his deathbed and he releases one last short story just <laughs> harry died <laughs> just totally destroys everything yeah it'd be hilarious <laughs> not even like died in his sleep but just is like and um I don't know. Hit by a truck walking to Max. <laughs> oh, rude. A hearse. A hearse gets him. Oh uh, Harry would live for, like, the, the irony or the poetic justice of it or, you know, whatever. Just when I got my happily ever after. Dead. Right. <laughs> so the security men end up getting freaked out because of this shield and yeah and all their he, machinery their, their their guns dying so they they peace out Bye. he does have a pretty good line here you know he's like i don't blame them if all i had was a gun and it had just been that useless i would run too and again useless against a guy not even like he had anything big or not even like you know he had his cool duster to like fling up around him and like bounce spells off of her and you know what i mean like he doesn't have even oh yeah he does have a staff now yeah he did pick he's it up, got yeah. a staff and his rod but yeah exactly right it's just you know like even that, you could, you know, our brains could be like some technologically, like his coat's made of Kevlar or something, you know, but it's like, yeah, no, there's there's nothing to... This guy in the box. But he's just standing there and bulls are just bouncing off. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then as you're scrambling to get away from him, he's just like kicking the bullets aside with his foot. <laughs> like, yeah, like, his bare feet. Just yeah. ding, 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 ding. It's a nice yeah. effect there. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think if I was, you know, a, a hired gun who had no idea about the supernatural, which is, you know, what we infer from this, you essentially just think you went up against Superman, because who else, you know, doesn't take bullets, right? right? Yeah, exactly. like, pretty much. Exactly. Because right. even, like, you You're know, right. even Deadpool, I think, would be less scary, or, like, Kick-Ass or Deadpool, you know, who, like, take the bullets, but then just kind of heal instantly yeah, around it, or Kick-Ass, who just doesn't feel it and can keep going. Yeah. Either of those, I think, would be a little bit easier for my brain to process but as you well still, anyways, yeah, right? Like, okay, we've got bad aim, you know? Like, something. he's still bleeding. But yeah, just like, none the of them fatal. <laughs> but yeah, exactly, but... But even that, you could kind of explain away, like, well, oh, that's what I mean, Yeah, we just, like, okay, we didn't hit him very well. Like, obviously, I guess they're not fatal yet, right? but, but yeah, hit them. Yeah. The full of shield thing is, yeah, like, if I was just some hired gun who didn't know about the supernatural, I'd be like, ah, yeah, no, peace. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'm out of here. 
So yeah, so he tries to do all this, let us out, no one will get hurt. And she's like, mm, what about Kyle and Kelly? Which is so dumb because she's like, mm, they would have died soon anyways. I'm like, then really, what do you give a shit about? <laughs> you already know, like you basically are like, eh, Kelly was already kind of nutty and, you know, they don't trans transition well all the time and they probably would have died anyways. And I'm like, then that's really, really low bargaining chips there, Bianca. Why are you making a pay for that? Extra funny too, because we'll meet future vampire twins who are like born vampires, right? And that one makes a bit more sense, but it makes hilarious to me that the red is going up to like pairs of twins and being like, you guys do everything together, right? You both want to be vampires, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or like which one did it first and like went to his twin is like you gotta do this with me we do everything together you know like because like changing them is a lot different than being born one right so it's especially funny to me that like yeah it's like who's walking up to like twins and lovers and like these groups these couples and groups of people being like you do you it do together you like do everything together yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wish this date would last forever well <laughs> <laughs> come on all the twins are doing it <laughs> go ahead blow out the candles dear i gross yeah yeah, he tries to give, he's like, last chance, Bianca. And uh, and she's like, oh, and if I say no? And he just, right, he's, he's done. Just right then, he doesn't try, and he just poof, lances another spell at her, just flings some fire. <laughs> Sadly, it's not very effective, because she whips out a spell of her own. Right, she uh, she uses her own counter spell to deflect, and she admits that her lessons with Mavra were quite successful, so this confirms that she did get her knowledge from the old... <laughs> The hag. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that actually brings him up a moment because he's like, I knew she knew like some little like parlor tricks or something, but he's like, that was some serious mojo. And um, I don't know if, uh, you know, like he's like, there's people that are like on the, you know, wizard enough to be on the council, but couldn't have countered my spell coming at him like that, right? So he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, she's kind of dangerous. A little bit more than I was counting on, but. And Harry's in a very peculiar situation right now, too, because like, We've seen t um, only three books in, but he's mentioned, too, he's like, you use too much magic, and, like, that's not, like, an infinite resource. Like, you gotta wait to, like, rest and get it all back and stuff like that, like any other sort of resource, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he did just, like, get a big surge from Kravos, and he's got this adrenaline going on, too, so it's, like, it's kind of hard to know, like, just how much of Harry is... What What is his power supply really at right now? Like, what is he working with, you know? Mm-hmm, mm because so he himself is... is beaten and tired and, and tortured and, and yeah and, and i think what we've seen mostly from him is very much like that like the same way you know it's like well if you eat a good breakfast you're fueled for the day and you know is that fuel as you you know move around and do stuff and burn it off oh you gotta have some lunch you gotta have some dinner you gotta get some sleep right and so magic is just always seems very much in line with that right that partially just however your state of body and mind is and then whatever else you're you know again like using magic mm -hmm is like if you were running around instead of just walking, right? You're using that much more at a time or whatever, right? Right, and Bianca hasn't had nearly as much of the expenditure that Dresden has up mm -mm. to this point. Like she's pretty much just had everybody else do the, the dirty work for her. Yeah, she pretty much was just... Well, yeah. yeah, this is the first time we've seen her use magic, definitely, you know? from Up until this point, all the other magic we've kind of been assuming was either Kravos or Mavra, right? This is the yeah. first time we would confirm Bianca. So for all we know, she's at 100% full level. Well, yeah, Reserves. she pretty much was just having her party, and then mm -hmm. at most she would have scrambled around to get out of the courtyard when he started mm -hmm. blowing things <laughs> up and burning things down. Right. Um, then, yeah, grab a few people and hustle inside, but again, right, her lack lackeys probably mostly would, you know, like, come on, Mr. President, and, you know, shuffled her off indoors, so. Well, and she throws another wrench in, so it's not just, like, a magic potential that she has to kick his ass. She calls on um, Don Pe uh, Don Paolo. Don Paolo Ortega of the Red Court to, to intervene and and lets on that he has been monitoring this whole situation is basically a witness for Bianca uh, that he has been violating the, the accords and and uh, that he's broken the laws of hospitality and, and and she hasn't done anything in the wrong. Yeah. I know this is big, yeah, because it kind of, like you say, draws him up short for a second when she counters that and he doesn't just... And then she, yeah, was like to throw something else into the pot. And he's like, oh, what? <laughs> nice to meet you, Don. Um, well, but it's the I all, like, odds against him. They are, but again, like, I love, you know, Harry's composure in this, right? You know, as, as most of the rest of us who are always like, you know, five minutes later or five days later with the perfect comeback, <laughs> you know, Harry just thinks on his feet. But he's like, hey, Don, I'd like to lodge a complaint. <laughs> He's like, well, I bet you would, but I'm not really here for your side. You're the one that broke all the rules. And he's like, whatever. She broke the spirit of every one of them. And he's like, ah. But 
And in the accords that were drawn up between my kind and your kind, so between mortals, wizards, whichever line, and all the signatories and, of the accords. Yeah, you know, like, well, yeah, because it's like my kind and your kind and stuff like that. It's like that had no basis, you know, because there was too many sides, I'm sure, too many interpretations, too many. So the spirit meant nothing, and everyone agreed just to adhere to the letter. And by that, even as unbelievable as it is, even though we know we can see, you know, in the face of everything that Bianca has done, technically, she ain't broken nothing, and Harry has done all the... The breaking the rules and stepping over boundaries and right. slapping. So, f- what he calls it is cowboy <sighs> justice. And I really thought that was a great way to label his behavior because that's exactly what like the foundation of his behavior is. is this, yeah. Like this- Vigilante. Vigilante, yeah. Vigil- yeah, especially since half the time he's got his cowboy boots and his jeans and his duster. Yeah. <laughs> no hats. Like, is it? No hats, no hats. But <laughs> the cowboy justice. I. It should be mentioned, though, here, like, I love Paolo. He's a great character, and he had an amazing Why entrance. Why don't you just marry him, then? If I could, I would. Um, what's, what's the chick? <laughs> Anastasia? His wife? No, 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 not Anastasia. Um, oh, yeah, that's Lucio. <coughs> um, Ariana? Ariana. Ariana. She's not a good one, but, you know. Anyways, Paolo right. has a great entrance to this whole thing where, like, you know, like a vampire just swings open a door and he's just there and he's like, hey, Dresden, and, Sitting like... there for stylish king. But, yeah, like, as we've just said, like, he's here to be a witness for the Reds and stuff like that, and he's a high, high level. We just, we spoke, I mean, it was a while ago, like, maybe five or ten episodes ago, we spoke about what a fucking... <laughs> um, a baroness? What, what a level? Yeah, like, just, Bianca like, like how Bianca's job is... Like, it's up there. Like, the girl has ascended to extreme heights. But Paolo's even higher than that. Like, he is um, really extremely high up there when it comes to the, you know, power structure of the Red Court vampires, right? So I love that. Yeah, he's just like, hey, what's up? Been watching this shit. (laughs) I'll see you a couple more times in the future to fuck shit up. (laughs) But anyways, I just like him a lot. And I like his entrance. You gotta get entrance for a reoccurring character. Decent. Yeah. Well, he's got him by intellectual clauses, is what he's done. Yeah. Yes. Basically. So, uh, yeah. So they're like, "Mm, sorry, doesn't matter. You're still the one that's going to come out with the short end of the stick on all of this. And, uh... Right, yeah. So so Bianca basically says, sorry, like, he's the witness to you starting a war. (laughs) Is the short short and tall Mm -hmm. of it. And Harry's like, uh, eh, duh. Like, that's bullshit. And they're like, yeah, but you know what? Mm." Too bad. Not the way we're going to swing it. (laughs) Well, it doesn't matter. That's right. They don't even have to. They're like, gotcha, "Mm." bitch. Which, you know, is exactly what's been going on here. I mean, for all intents and purposes, yeah. I mean, Ortega really lines it up here quite well as all of Harry's crimes. And and this has happened a lot for Harry. Bianca, he walks into it a lot. He he got off at 16. He Well, probably a few times. But he got (laughs) off of his death sentence at 16. On a technicality. This is why you don't marry your foster siblings. <laughs> don't date your foster siblings, okay? <laughs> so he escaped the death sentence as a teenager on a technicality. When we see him in Stormfront, there's a few times that comes up. Like, especially Doom with of Damocles. Yeah, well, Morgan and stuff like that. was like, Ugh, you were summoning fairies and that breaks the fourth. He's like, it was a dewdrop fairy. They didn't have to take the deal. I just wanted it. He's like, well, that's a technicality. And he's like, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> Duh. What I intend to hide wildly behind. And then... Um, and then he gets off in that one on, like, a technicality or something again when... There's a couple I know when he's facing... Dresden, because I don't know if the first one is... He's facing Morgan? For, sorry, fa- when Morgan is facing Dresden, because I know the first one is about Toot, and I feel like it comes up later on, or maybe it's just later in that conversation or something like that, where, again, he's like, that's a technicality. A yeah, he's like, he's you've like, been yeah, asking woman. out, you've been asking around about... Yeah, but anyways, and then... Da, 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 so now, here, Dresden, so Dresden keeps, like, wiggling out. You just out. started a war on a technicality. So he keeps what? wiggling out of things with Leah, I'm like, you know, as much of a technicality as he can. I was like, well, I stated that never, never, you can't, well, I'm not, you know, Even really, that whole I werewolf didn't. thing, like, whether or not being killed by it, he's like, is this a technicality? When we put on the belt and stuff like that, he's like, how, how far and close like we debated about like when does it become killing with magic when he's got oh, the belt on and stuff like that yes right? yeah and Harry yeah. even said i think it was in that book or was it the beginning of this one when he's reflecting back on it one or the other and he's just like 
you know. Super lives in this gray area. Oh, well, okay. now, it's about, now it's about to bite him in the ass because now all the technicalities that he's been wiggling around to, you know, hide wildly behind and get out of shit. Now the coin is flipped or whatever, and now this technicality is coming to bite him in the yeah. ass, and he's on the losing. Technically, we didn't do anything wrong. Mm. So, even though we set all this up and tried to turn your girlfriend and killed a whole bunch of innocent people and took the sword and made you a gravestone and da-da-da-da-da, technically, <laughs> we were all perfectly within our rights and boundaries to do that. It's hilarious when you list that off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, they were, right? <laughs> yeah, right, pretty yeah. much, right? And like, even as a reader who's on just inside, you can still see all the times when like they were you yeah know, within their rights like you do like you can't his toe over yeah the like you can't help but admit like and he says like it's like one of the most devastating lines where he's like like um you know he died doing the right thing and you know like harry says at the end of that chapter whatever it is and he's like fuck like <laughs> i'm gonna do the right thing yeah Guess right and it's like that's one of the moments where you're just like because here we go right yeah. but even still yeah like you read this and you still it's like yeah like as much as he's backed into that corner it's a technicality you can still be like yeah that was Harry's fault <laughs> yeah <laughs> next time don't go to a party you say you're not gonna go to because they're gonna fucking screw you over <laughs> like, I'm going I'm not going I'm going I'm not going I'm not going surprise oh shit yeah <laughs> Yeah. Or so do yeah. everything in your power to antagonize while you're at that party. <laughs> well, okay. And like, <laughs> nice costume. It comes up so soon in Summer Night too, when he's like, again, like we will get there in a minute. But yeah, he's just like, I'm not gonna make any deals with fairies. And then instantly the fairies like, I'm gonna make a deal. And he's like, okay, but I can refuse whatever deal I want to. And she's like, you can refuse whatever deal you want to. And she's like, okay, here's the first deal. And he's like, okay, I'll do it because like, what else am I gonna do? Like, refuse <laughs> the first. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> He's like acting, he's like, she's only ever going to offer me this or a war crime. It's like, no, you don't know that. Just say no for the rest of your life. Like, you don't know what's coming. Like, <laughs> Just say no, Harry. I'm just saying, like, you, you imagine, he, that imagine he turned down every deal she ever came at him with until he's like on his deathbed. At that point, sure, just do it then. Okay, <laughs> she's going to die tomorrow. Like, <laughs> Only not because she'd ferry up some way to oh, still, keep though. from dying. Well, you're like 800 that's, years that's old. That's what he'd be doing. See, he'd think, well, it's fine. I'm going to like die tomorrow. And then that would be the loophole where she just, you know, stasis is his life forever. She and now he's stuck so doing it. Now he's okay. like stuck doing it. But to be fair me. enough, like, yeah, how bad is it then? You'd like make her wait 400 years and then finally it's like, okay, fine. Who cares if I start an apocalypse doing her bidding? I'm going to be dead as soon as I do the third task. I'd speed run it then. I'd be like, give me all three right now. <laughs> Matt would be like, I don't <laughs> think so. That's what you want? No. But yes. So yeah, so basically. Cowboy Justice. Cowboy Justice. So he goes to Ortega, blah, 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 blah. If there's a point here, get to it kind of a thing. And he's like, oh, no, no, I don't have a point. I'm just here as a witness. I'm not here to make deals or take sides. I'm just. And then Bianca's like, but since you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Bianca. Ortega's like, well, that's it. I'm. I'm just, just, just know you're being watched. We're taking this all down. We're making notes. That's not even one sentence later so, that Bianca's literally like, I know, Bye. it's like. <laughs> Well, yeah, Bianca's here to make a deal. I know, but it's still funny that Ortega's like all like aloof, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just watching, and Bianca's like, yeah, this is exactly why he's here. You're fucked, and it's like, all right, we're going to take out the mystery from it all. One second later. I guess, I suppose. make him sweat. I suppose. I just always take it Yeah, no, he suffered enough. Let's just get to the point now. Yeah. But Although, yeah, like, uh, you got to imagine, like, if I was Harry, I'd be, like, on my feet swaying right now in my ducky boxers, <laughs> right? I would be, like, Bianca, too. I'd be like, I don't think he's going to get to the point if we don't tell him. I was like, eh, maybe we should just tell him what's up. <laughs> Did he just shit himself? <laughs> yeah. like, we better, we better he's about to fall back down these stairs. And I've got this whole villain speech I've been practicing for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello, we're on a timeline. Yeah, no shit. You already screwed up my speeches tonight. Like, I have been timing his entrance into this hall for, like, a year now, but... <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, so basically yeah, she gets she cuts to the chase here and she's like, Yeah, a witness who will go back and tell everybody all the bullshit you just done and that'll mean war open war between the council and the vampires and he's like, Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> that's like a big deal. Not just war in Chicago, not just a tiff between Harry and Bianca or Harry and a bunch of vampires in Chicago. No. They're talking the red court against the white council. And Harry's like, well, fuck that, it's a little bit more. <laughs> well, and one thing he throws out there is that this is like, um, I'm not in living memory, and some wizards live a damn long time. Yes, and it's been like a millennia yeah. since they had a big old war. They made these peace talks, treaties, accords, and things have been, you know. So yeah, so like we're going to hear, as the series progresses, some of these ginormous battles that 
um, exist in real history. We will see like future like um, like things come up in the books of Jim Butcher accrediting his real historical events to supernatural causes and reasons and effects and blah blah blah. Does any good author does you author know, steal or whatever? It all you know, Buffy yourself, did a lot right? of that too. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like it's one of these things where it's like. It is a bit not necessarily foreshadowing, but it is a little bit just like to understand the scope of just like listen, like twenty first century, we don't get a lot of what wars? Go ahead and say it. We don't get a lot of wars in the city. World War Ones. <laughs> yes. World War Three no, is coming. We, we have, we, there's only yeah. one World War One, you are correct. We've got a lot of world we've got a lot of wars in this world. That is absolutely true. In the 21st but there will century. only ever be the first first. Um but yes, yeah. Although I side to that but i just because i do like kind of actually when things history does take on like a lot more fun and is a lot more interesting if you start assigning like supernatural causes and reasons and events to them <laughs> so this is yes yeah, so not in the millennia and now all of this actions reactions whatever that has occurred could end up in a big big open war between all of them and it's not cool and That's dresden bad. is like well son of a bitch <laughs> that's not good so he agrees so, to listen so to he agrees to listen deal. Yeah, that is the whole point of the last forty minutes. And of she's speaking. so good. <laughs> so yeah, she'll forgive his excess of bad taste over the last few days, and you know, but for the deaths, it's not unworkable. And I'll even forgive you the deaths because you know they were kind of losers and going baddie and <laughs> going baddie, and we're probably gonna pop off anyways soon. And you know, and he's like, oh gee, that's swell of you, right? And she's like, oh, it gets better. You can even take. You know, your buddy's little, your white whore's girlfriend or whatever. Or the white bastard's whore. He's not calling Thomas the whore. He's calling, or she's calling Justine. Um, she can take all your doodads and gizmos and free of future malice. Everything's a-okay. And he's like, wow, how could I possibly say no, all right? Like, you just know, you know, whatever's coming, right? And she's like, all this for the low, low price of leaving Susan here. And he's like, mm, hmm, let me think. <laughs> and she's like, well, do you want to accept my, my bargain, my compromise? And he's just like, I love her. She's like, what? Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. He's like, I love her. She's like, what? She's half turned. Like, you're crazy. Who cares? She's already mine. He's like, mm, no. And I have to admit, this is another one of those, you know, I gotta, she's like, she's gonna be, you know, she's gonna turn all the way. Like, it won't be long. And he's like, Maybe, maybe not. Get your hands off my girlfriend. <laughs> You're just like, ooh, yeah. This is like, you know, one of those classic moments between, like, you know, Harry yeah. and Voldemort. Like, you know what's difference between us? You are incapable of love. You're never going to understand why I'm going to wake up every morning and fight you because you just do not legitimately understand the concept of love at all. Which is, you know, actual Voldemort lore, right? Like, he, his, he was conceived because of a love potion, so Voldemort can't right. feel love. But in this case, you know, Bianca, bad guy, vampire, it's just like... You don't get it? Yeah. She's just like, she's not a vampire to me. She's my girlfriend. That's that. Yeah. And she's like, you'd flirt with chaos and destruction with war for the sake of this one wounded soul. And he's basically like, I can't think of a better reason. (laughs) You know? Basically, for the sake of one soul, for one life, for one, for one loved one. Yeah. The way I see it, there's nothing else worth fighting a war for. Exactly. Which, you know, as heroic, romantic, awe-inspiring, whatever you want to call it. Can you really make that call for the entire White Council? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think all those other ways are going to be very <laughs> happy about this. Right. It's just Merlin like he's, involved us for what? He's speaking <laughs> like, you know, a king or like the Merlin. And he's just like, i do anything for her. And you're it's like, it's great when... naked wizard and some used boxers. <laughs> when you're Harry Potter, when you're Arthur Pendragon, when you're... Maybe not Candace Everdeen because she wasn't the head of the um, organization, yeah. anyways. But still, like when you are the, her up as a yeah. yeah, when you are the top of your thing, it's one thing to declare war for the love of your life. But people like Harry or even Katniss who are on the bottom, it's like, like I mean, even in the Hunger Games too. Like, well, I was gonna um, say she at least was elevated. She was the face of the revolution and all. Yeah. Of that, what are they? Right? What was she it? Did, um, District thirteen. They were right. She was. She was thirteen or she was twelve. Oh, she was twelve. She yes, was 12. Right, thirteen yeah. was yes. A secret. Thirteen was a secret. So District Thirteen is the one who was in charge, and they had like their president or king or whatever the fuck they called it. President, I think. No, no. she wasn't a president because it was President Snow. Snow. Yeah, she was a uh, something oh, or rather right Queen director. Or something. I don't know. Cool. Whatever the hell she was, though, she essentially like said as much. You know, Candace is like, "We got to save and we got to do this," and they're like, "Yeah, that actually doesn't fucking matter to the war. Like that has nothing to goddamn do with a war. Like sh- no one cares that you're in love, right?" 
And so that's exactly what people would be saying to Harry were they here. They'd be like, you know what? That really sucks for you. But we're actually not going to go to war just because you fucked up your girlfriend. <laughs> and it's not and the, the White mm-hmm. Council is going to consider her a lost cause because she's been infected by a vampire. True. So she's not even. She's not she, even she, human she, anymore. Yeah, she's, she, she's, she's just a fully lost in the dark vampire. side as far Who as they're concerned. She, yeah. She, he gave up everything for a mm-hmm. vampire. Yeah. Which they're going to think is the stupidest thing ever. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, I want to also throw in there, too, fuck you, Thomas, this is actually still all your fault. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, that's just another thing, though. Like, yeah, they're not here to speak into his ear right now. He is kind of calling all the shots, but it should be reminded that despite the fact that he is the titular character, he's actually not in charge of shit. And actually shouldn't be the one to be able to make these calls, right? Which is, I mean, part of the reason why you'll see in future books why the White Council is so on his ass and, like, you brought us to war. And actually, I don't even think they know why it happened. Because he doesn't tell anyone about Susan. So they don't even know. Yeah. He gives he, he files a report. Oh, he oh he does tell them what exactly happened with oh, Susan? Yeah, yeah he, he has, has to oh, yeah, say he, in the next book. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, okay. he read the report. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, yes. he, I was going to say, Harry does his own thing and, and makes his own choices out there a lot in the field. Mm-hmm. But he does still sort of toe the line in following protocol. He always mm-hmm. sends in his, like, reports and what You know, when shit... Basically, that's mm-hmm. not just tiny shit. Um, he's made references, I'm yes. sure, in the last book. He did it in Stormfront, at least. I don't know about You know, exactly, where it's like, he does file his report on what all this went. Like, wait, what the fuck? Why are you mm-hmm. running around blasting wads where everyone could see you? Well, there was a reason. <laughs> this is my side a demon toad and a werewolf. Yeah, uh-huh. I did the best I could. You know, I didn't send the toad. I was just defending myself. So, yeah. But, yes, he does. Yeah, he okay, does okay, explain okay. all that, that about going in to save Susan. And yeah. yeah Still, so, though, anyways, point is, is that, yeah, like... Obviously, good guy. He has to say no. He has to fight for her. But it is a little bit funny to think, like, yeah, like, you're not. Well, and this is what's setting it up a lot for the next book. Because, yeah, basically well, the well, council's going to go, well, what the fuck did you do? Yeah. You don't speak for us, but yet you spoke and yet, for us. And yet, here we are, <laughs> stuck with your mess, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. vampire's like, mm, we don't care. You have well, this little shit out there to say stuff. And, and we said this, too. Yeah, we said, like, the fact that Bianca holds him. Like, this isn't even just Bianca picking on a smaller guy. She fully believes that he is at the power level of one of the big guns. Like, as far as Bianca's concerned, he does speak for the White Council. Like, she, he's the one she's well, afraid of. Yeah, well, yes. And I mean, I think they know sort of She knows he doesn't have. She yeah. knows he doesn't have any political standing there, yes. but I still think, like, it's one of those things where, like, you know, Marcone will say as much soon, I don't think it's much of a spoiler to say, like, he's, like, Dresden is, like, I'm, like, yeah, I'm afraid of that guy. Like, I want to keep an eye on Dresden, you know? It's not necessarily just because Dresden is on our doorstep in Chicago. People are meeting Dresden, and they're like, this is somebody, like, nobody knows where he's going to go. And so everybody's worried. The good guys are worried. The bad guys are worried. Like, we see this as the books grow and grow and grow, and he makes yeah. more and more decisions. And sometimes he's making, well, all the time we've said just now, like, he makes, he lives in the gray zone, which makes it very hard for everyone in, um... What, what, what's outside of gray? White and black? <laughs> dark and light? Like, what was The extremes. That? Yeah, like, you know, like, everyone who is very fully good, like, Michael and, um, you know, even Murphy and, like, you know, she, she waves a little bit more, but Michael and as we'll meet, like, Butters and, like, other people who are much more firmly, we are good guys and we only do good guy stuff, to the bad guys where we'll meet, like, you know, like, um, um, other vampires or other fairies or other werewolves or other, I don't know, supernatural creatures, generally speaking. Marcone, yeah. for example, who are much more firmly bad guy, mm-hmm. right? And everyone's looking at Harry in this gray zone, constantly stepping in and out to other people's sides. And he's like, you know, he's constantly in like the dead man zone where he's just like, I'm on your team now, I'm on your team now, I'm on your team here, I'm on your team, right? It's very yeah. much like everyone's just like, we don't know what he's going to wake up tomorrow and be like, you know? <laughs> right. So it is very much like, it like just it really extremely shows Bianca too to be like, I'm not just, like, forcing some little, like, mouse to make a decision on the entire White Council. She's like, I'm after you specifically because I think you are a... a He's a wild Tiger in sheep's clothing, you know? Wolf in sheep's clothing? Yes. It makes him completely unpredictable in which way he's going to go because he doesn't actually have that really, really... Well, he's... Well... I I, I can't really say necessarily a a moral compass Mm -hmm. that's... Because he is such... He's very moral, uh, but it's his own morals. Yeah. He picks and chooses, though, so I don't even know if he's, if you can... Well, like, yeah, again, I know what you're I trying to say. I don't know how to say this. Yeah, but he again, has morals, it's, but they're, his, not, they're very... It's his own moral code that he abides by, but where that falls in the grander scheme of other people, like, exactly, right? He's willing to, you know, well, again, work at, with Marcone for day, five minutes if it means taking out Bianca in the end or something, but then it's, like, right back to, okay, now, Mark, you know, again, work with my enemy if it furthers everything else. The ends justify the means a little bit. I was going to say, I guess the other reason is this with with Bianca is that um, she is putting him in that position because she's like knowing, I guess, that he's not, you know, it's not just how she sees his strength against her, but knowing that 
he's not got the political clout. It's like, even if I can't, your yeah. own guys are going to squash own, you like yeah. a bug. Because She's making yeah. sure that he fails on all aspects. You're, yeah, they're going to kick your ass for drawing them into this. Very fake. You, you don't come off winning that. no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I know that everyone's, you know, not going to be like, oh, well, of course, Wizard Dresden was totally, they're all going to be like, what the fuck, Harry? And she still gets to go. <laughs> yeah, this isn't one of those situations where it's like, he speaks for all of us. All wizards are together. They're like, whoa, 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 we never saw this guy before in our lives. And especially, <laughs> as has already been outlined for us and will be hammered and hammered and hammered as we go the white council kind of adopts into everyone who has enough power to be a wizard right it's not anyone with power but it's enough who has power you get to you be have. part of the white council and yeah then they talk about the haves and the have nots the little right people that have an ink like like lydia right he's like she had some kind of buzz of power but, but it not, wasn't enough just, to be just because yeah not indicted into the council right generally it's on, like really yeah. small like one trick pony sort of things don't mm-hmm. get to come into the council yeah but Further than that, you've got a second level of the wardens, and that is like some serious power mojo. Like you're expected, you're heavy, heavy, heavy hitters. You're expected to uphold the well, wizard laws, the, then, but the also wizard like you military. Are, military guys usually yeah. you don't want to piss them off. <laughs> but it, like it's it's more power. It's not like you know. It's not just the people who respect the law. Like and like you know. Like I equate it to a bit of just like a regular like you know like mall cop versus like an well, actual armed forces you know well like, yeah that's what i'm saying right i was yeah. like i'm not gonna go and like try to pick a fight with a marine because mm-hmm. he's gonna squish me no matter what yeah. you know like obviously anybody yeah good enough to be in that position and with that training is both you know magically physically whatever they've yeah, yeah they're the brawlers they got the stuff mm-hmm. but so it's just I, i'd like to point out though that like harry is like he's only part of the council kind of because like everyone gets to be part of the council so they've got the juice like you know like we don't really make that choice like we do it because they want to control you mm-hmm. and like okay yeah you're part of our council you actually have no choice you have to become part of our council but at the same time for harry most of the council would love nothing more than to squash him they don't even want him to like be a part of the council to mm-hmm. watch him they like he has no voice in like the council it's not just point, like you really. know like every wizard is a man of their own but harry was especially the man no one wanted like well, nobody like, wanted him on their team for the most part you know like okay. he, obviously enough people did enough to give him the doom of damocles and but not he, kill again this i think is where you know, mankind and ambitions and free will and all that, like, you know, the um, the council isn't, you know, as pure as it was once designed to be or whatever, too, right? Does Obviously, she have allergies or she just really worked up about this? With ex- You're like crying, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Gets a little warm down here sometimes. Hmm. But, you know, yeah, the people in the political positions, like the Merlin and stuff like that, who run the council, who would love to be able to say who can and can't be in and this and that, right? So I'm like, I think, again, as it, as it becomes more of a governing body than a, you know, as population grows and different people from all walks are coming in, that's, again, sort of, I think, the balance of the council between are they there to actually you know, restrict and judge and govern, or are they just supposed to have a loose, like, hey, this is kind of how we're going to temper our powers so people don't go about just abusing everything and be like the other supernatural monsters and... Well, I think, you know, the White Council, first and foremost, is to create a protection between humanity and supernatural. Mm -hmm. That was, like, their number one. They're like, there's nobody sticking up for the humans, but we all agree that humans can't know to stick up for themselves. Okay, so then once the accords were in place, then it was like, what do we do now? No, I guess we'll just start. Well, they, it's not like they didn't already have a government going already between themselves, but their whole original founding reason was like, it's not fair that no one is on the human side because they don't get to know. They don't get to be a signatory mm-hmm. or like before the Accords were created. It mm-hmm. was just a regular thing. Like humans don't get to know or we go back into the dark ages where they hunt witches and, um, you yeah. know, kill off the whole black court. And that's bad for you and it's bad for us. Like we so don't want- So they afforded some protection. So yeah, it was like, that. they afforded some protection. That was their main thing. It's like, we are team human, okay? Wizards are team human. Mm -hmm. They can't get to know we're team human, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, you know, as it's come, I mean, they wouldn't have created... I mean, the seven laws are not about protecting humans entirely. It's protecting wizards from themselves. Well, it's some regulatory use right. of power which kind makes of sense but yes. my point is that like they didn't just like uh, i'm saying all of this just to say like hey, of all the guys harry is just not their favorite to begin with any random schmuck like we'll meet a guy um carlos ramirez in the future right and he's just some random schmuck on the same level as harry more or less of like magically speaking and you say that in, to his in, face. in in um in um dighted into the white council becomes a warden blah 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 
and like if he were the one in this position right now who accidentally started a war like they'd still be like what the fuck you stupid fuck who the fuck are you to start a war with us but harry is like they really specifically don't like harry to begin with yes. yeah right so it's like that's what i'm saying is like it's just an extra extra like bianca measures him up as somebody to be afraid of and she's fully pinpointed this is the guy exactly who can crumble everything and start this war and blah 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 it's just a lot of words to say, like... Yeah, I was gonna say, it took you an awful long know, time to say that. <laughs> she's very, like... She's good at revenge. I don't know she's what She's very well with. planned out. She, like, she, yeah, has every she, just, like, you know, she has every avenue... Corner. Harry himself has lined him up to be the perfect yeah. enemy of my... You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Like, uh, you know? Bianca should kiss Harry for everything she's done. he's done for her on, <laughs> on behalf of her revenge. Yeah, except for about the next ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, you know. It was glorious while it lasted. It was very short-lived for Bianca. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, um, Harry, yeah, get loves away her. from my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, Bianca loses control over that that statement. Like she just, she's like, she loses her insane. flesh mask. She commands everyone to kill Dresden at this point and just hurdles a spell of darkness at him. Yeah, fortunately, he you know uses that to his advantage and kills other vampires with it by deflecting it. Good yes. on him. Which, yeah, I was kind of always love when that works. You know, he doesn't just like counter it and like fizzle it or something. He actually manages to just like throw it in someone else's face and make it that <laughs> way. Boom. Just, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So all of a sudden there's some mad, wild running of vampires coming at him and him trying to dodge and throwing some magic back and forth. And he flings out some fire again and manages to sort of make a, a momentary barrier between this kind of wall of fire. Didn't really take anybody out with it. He just kind of runs, like, kind of carves the floor. But at the same time, it gives him, like, this little moat of, mm -hmm. right? So he literally, you know, falls back a step and tries to take a moment to assess and is like, what? The ever loving fuck? They're all, they're, there's more of them. They're... Uh, you know, have more um, stamina or whatever, you well, know, they're not as beaten and... <laughs> and his moat doesn't do a lot because there's vampires in the ceiling. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, yeah he did, he uh -huh. did, yeah, I took out a couple of those ones first for the... Good thing they can't, you know, control their drooling or that guy totally would have had a drop on him. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, yeah, once he, you know, flicks them off the ceiling and swats them away and stuff like that, he's got a brief... Um, and yeah, he's like, well, how the fuck do I get out of this now? Like, I've only got so much. I've been throwing some of it around just to get me this far. And just basically to, you know, keep him on his feet. Like, that's the other thing. Like, he was so far gone between the poisoning, the beating, and the whole bit that literally, I think, half of that magical um, rush he got was literally just, you know, keeping him ambulatory. <laughs> you know, let alone then actually throwing magic around on top of that, right? Well, uh, fortunately, like, during all this fighting, he does get this really great idea. And he <laughs> creates a circle around himself, and he contacts all of Bianca's dead victims and imbues them with power. Yeah. Just floods them with it. He's lucky that way. He's always, you know, depressed and thinking the worst and how he's going to die here in this house with all these other dead people. Hundreds and dozens and thousands of dead people that are all right here in this house where I am, where I'm about to die and become one of them. All these dead people. Hey, wait a sec. <laughs> so that's one of the sad things about this home is that, you know, for the mm. most part, Bianca's not taking, you know, strong people off the street. She's especially looking for the weak and the alone and the, the already prey, downtrodden yeah. prey. Very sort tragic. Of, right? It's very tragic. The so, ones no one will miss, no one right? will look for very much. Yeah. So you've got these, you know, all, all these. the prime makings of a tortured soul who will become a ghost and can't move on, but they're just so weak. They don't have this power of their own. They can't become a haunting or a poltergeist or, whatever, yeah. or anything like that, right? So you've got this, like, uh, essentially um, dormant, you know, ghost, essentially, that are just piling up and piling up yeah. and piling up. For years, because wasn't it, like, I think they, the first book says that she had been there, been in that location since the 20s? Yeah. Yeah, they thought that Capone had built it for her, right. one of his mistresses or something, so this particular house, this, this so mansion, the Velvet Room, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so 80-ish years yeah, at this point yeah. of vampire victims, and um, on top of that, I mean, like, assuming her regular business, which is already, you know, vampire hotspot, we know the last year has been, like, extreme ramp up so it's like mm -hmm. even if you're saying let's say like they're kill like well one a week <laughs> again know? she's running a brothel and stuff like mm -hmm. that and again dating back to those days i'm like i'm sure between you know drugs and lack of protection and she's had all kinds of other 
misfortunate accidents and stuff with her girls. Even like, outside know, of the clients. That, I mean, again, she's a respectable madam, so maybe she, on the whole, does a lot. To, you know what I mean? But, but they still need to eat. Like. Basi- but, but yeah, but I mean, like I say, right, just, you know, I mean, she's basically running a whorehouse with a bunch of prostitutes. So, oops, somebody overdoses, or oops, somebody catches some disease, or oops, some client gets too rough and offs his girl while he's, you know, I'm sure there's got to be some of the, you know, maybe she curbs it as much as possible when possible. But again, like you say, you got to think from starting out when, you know, there wasn't maybe as much. Uh, um, well, if they even if they did one person a week to feed on, one person a week for 52 80, weeks, 80, <laughs> 80 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's an insane amount of victims. And, and, that, that, but yeah, and that's, that's I, I think, mean, being just, modest. Well, yeah. And and that's I'm what I'm saying. It would have been like, like, the other like that's roughly 50 that bodies even, a year for 80 years is whatever a lot. but the last well, let's one see, five year times eight is 40 <laughs> but but this last year i'm saying was probably like you know like probably like triple or quadruple numbers a week because As like she how many more vampires and brought well, she's in making more, more vampires and she's bringing in more contacts and she herself she's is getting parties powerhouse and she herself is also as we've established been riding this vicious high of hating Dresden every single day. Like, she's been, as far as we can assume, basically, like, top 10 anger every day for 365 days, right? Yeah. And a vampire living at tip-top anger for 365 days is not your fault. Gotta take in a few extra calories. <laughs> yeah, right? So, yeah, like, I just imagine, like, you know, like, this boy could easily be bringing up, like, a thousand ghosts at this moment, you know, of just, and... Lower. Like, I don't know how to do math, but uh, whatever. Point is, <laughs> yeah, we already said eight times five is like 3, four. You have to have at least like four thousand or something. You're talking about one or eight or something. Point is, is 40, that you've got 40. this very sad. The fact that there's like you know four thousand plus ghosts laying dormant, just like waiting for their chance. And now they get it. That's one hell of a weapon. It's one hell of a weapon, which you know, all intents and purposes, Harry should not be able to do. <laughs> that seems very crabless to me because where the hell but, did that come from? But that's what he says. Any other day, any other place, but because Bianca kept fucking with the veil oh, yeah, between the veil itself, worlds, yeah. right? That's why. It's like a combination between it. Jumping yeah. in and out of the never, he, never here. Yep. Yes, that because it, yeah. he just made it weak so and he wobbly. Just used her weapon completely against her. Back against mm-hmm. her now. Thanks, Thanks Bianca. Little, I couldn't have done this without you. Just a little flip on that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So that's what he does. So yeah, he he pours all of that pain and suffering and depression and you know giving up upness, and he pours it all down into the ghost. It's lucky that all these like, bad guys make their homes their villain hideout as well. Right. So that really helps with the threshold a lot of the time for Harry. <laughs> it's like this is yeah true. Yeah. Do vampires have a threshold? They don't. Vampires don't get one. Well, it doesn't matter. No, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> For some of his other ones. <laughs> so, so the dead start arising from the floor and begin to take vengeance on the vampires. The ceiling begins to fall in and attack like the spirits. I want to throw in another thing here, okay? Oh. Because it's cool. Okay. He's saying he touches them all one by one. So how many did you do the math? I saw you on your phone. No, you weren't doing you the calculator app. 4,000. 4,000. Fine. I won't have the number then. Let's just round it up to 5,000. Just for a nice number. Let's just round well, it to 8 million. Why not? He has 8 million numbers. I mean, ghosts. And my point is, he touches them one by one. The spell he uses for them is memorium. Memoratium. Memortius. And it's just like... Your Latin's atrocious. Just kidding. So is Harry's. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in this. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Point is, is that yes. like it's just like you know, like don't like, worry. Most of us these days has <laughs> some of the only. Not all of us could learn Latin when we're growing up. <laughs> but yeah. Maggie, this is what happens when you get to a, sent to an obsolete school that doesn't teach you real life right. knowledge. I didn't even know. Absolutely. Like really, really even. And then went to like what, like Ukrainian church? Latin is a language. And Latin church. Can be. First it killed the Romans. Now it's killing me. I wish it would. She's what? been waiting twenty years to say that. For, yeah. But... <laughs> I made every child memorize it in school. And she's like, one day this is going to be worth it. <laughs> First grade, just memorize that. No, wait, we didn't start Latin until eighth grade. 4,160 if you did one person a week for 80 years. So he's got well over 4,000. So like you say, you could easily five, six. Yep. Eight million? Whatever. Eight million? <laughs> I don't know if we go quite that high that yet. That might be noticeable in 80 years. So he touches every single one of them. I remembers them for the first time in maybe 80 years. Hmm. Yeah. Gives them 
just enough oomph right. to get that revenge that they've been so wanting. I sort of get that image of like a, a you know a nuclear bomb goes off and you see that like that impact the zone, mushroom. the mushroom cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, mm-hmm. that's just, I could just see his his um, spell going off just like that. Boom, <laughs> down into the ground and then. <laughs> you know that alternative grave peril cover where it's just covered in ghosts. Oh, vaguely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Coming for you, Bianca. <laughs> Yeah. So but, this this again would be a very good cinematic moment right. if done right. It has the potential. Give so us that totally cartoon, damn it! Give us that cartoon of of the Ghostbusters when, mm-hmm. when, when their containment unit busts and all the ghosts Just, start flying out of the like, floor. Yeah, that's what this reminds me of. And I get that image. Mm-hmm. They start pulling everything. Mm-hmm. Like the the ceiling mm-hmm. starts falling in. And they keep then they they keep pulling down the vampires with them. Yes. Like, and I actually thought of that so just recently on the Discord they posted um, like a picture and it's got like twenty five movies in it and you can pick out all. And I have to admit, when first you're dating us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do they care as long as it comes out? I know, I know. It's because you tried to scream. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Actually, we're really close to. <laughs> We're not that far We're not off. Not that right far now. off from where we came. <laughs> Usually, it's that six made it like seven weeks in advance or something. But anyways. Point being is the one um, I think most of you looked at it. So whatever the Shining, um, and it's like chopped in the door. But when I first looked at that on my phone, I just saw like a green because it's like the background through the hole. And I, I literally I saw that and I was like, oh, Ghostbusters! That's totally like Slimer just went through that door. <laughs> and then when I like, zoomed in and looking, I was like, oh no, that's the axe chopped through the door, and that's just the wall on the other side. But it totally at first glance on my phone, I was like, well, Ghostbusters right there. Slimer just slimed it. Here's your your you didn't really need to know this fact about um oh, the shining. Can... So Jack Nicholson used to work as a volunteer firefighter. Originally that door was a prop door, hmm. but he took it down so fast and so easily they replaced the door with a real door ah. to, to make this the scene actually look real because look real. he was so efficient at, at busting through the door. <laughs> I did not know he, like, that. I did he not took know it out he was one a volunteer. Big, yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to know if you were ever in a fire, Jack Nicholson totally would have saved your life. <laughs> exactly. If he wasn't trying to kill you with the axe at the time. If if he wasn't trying to kill you at the time. <laughs> but how will Liam Neeson really stand up if I get kidnapped and he's my father? <laughs> I, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> yeah. So also, on top of the cinematic moment of the ghost coming up, they're screaming their names and they're screaming their murderers' names, oh, their loved ones. Oh that God. is for me the most, like, imagine you're in a theater and that's just like, right. that would be haunting. Right. I didn't even think about that. Right. Like, the auditory effect of that Yeah, movie. like, Ooh. I am Rachel. Uh, yeah. Maybe Paula. I've been dead a while. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe it was her middle name. Maybe. <laughs> Rachel Paula. I'm sure Bianca's had to forge so many death certificates at this point. And it's like, Paula, Rachel, whatever. <laughs> what do you mean? She never saw anything. She has no idea what happened to these people. Yeah. Yeah. And just how many, many of the spirits. You know, it, it's, it'd be nice to think that um, Paula, Rachel got to be the one to take out Bianca. But in reality, there's just so many that descend on Bianca. That it's like couldn't even pick her out because there's just that. I don't think many. that it actually says in this that it she does, does but, but but it says too that like just so many. Well, she gets the first bite out of her and then she gets swallowed mm-hmm. in. Her, so yes, right. I suppose. But before that, Bianca tries to make her escape with Susan. So you know, there's that. <laughs> she tries. <laughs> wah, wah. Doesn't work very well. Yeah, once it all starts going down, and there is he hasn't forgot about Justine because he's still at the top of the stairs. So when all of a sudden he unleashes this devastating, heart-wrenching horror on them. He's like, hey, Justine, let's go. Yeah, they make their break for it. So, yeah, and meanwhile, between, like, the ghosts zooming up and him, like, burning patches of it, like, the floor collapses and he's got to, like, skirt his way around and, like, not fall into this giant void. And I think this could be another powerful moment for Harry. Um, His... Another powerful moment for Harry's, like, mental health. That's not the word I wanted to use, but, like, <laughs> when Rachel comes to it and doesn't go after Harry. She goes after Bianca. It's yeah, like it's, it's f- affirming to what she said, oh. that she wasn't after him. Yeah. Oh, yes. doesn't blame him, rather. Doesn't blame doesn't him, right? Blame it's like, him. as much as Bianca maybe spent the last year being like, you're the fucking reason she died. Rachel has no qualms about who her killer was. Yeah. And she, she not only does does she not go for him, she actually saves Susan, too. So it's not, like, she gets well, in the way yeah. of, Su- uh, of of uh, uh, Bianca's blind rage. Mm-hmm. And, and she was going to attack Susan. Yeah. yeah gets right in the way of it. She stops her. figures mm-hmm. if she's, yeah, that she's like, fine, if I'm going to get out of this, I'm still going right. to take this damn woman with me. Yeah. And you still don't get her. Right. Right, and it's 
trying to make a break for it and then just between the chaos is when you know her hold like her her trance hold on susan starts to waver and susan starts going what the fuck is going on around here and yeah basically when she gets cut off again and you know dresden trying to throw everything at her is exactly it's like well if i can't have her you can't either and yeah it goes to deliver the killing blow there and yeah exactly is is rachel is the one that that um intercepts intercepts, interferes intervenes right and that is always kind of it's 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 interesting because like okay a lot of them are very spectral right they're making bodies out of fire they're making bodies out of smoke some of them used all these spent bullets right so you tend to think of these ghosts as being very like ephemeral so was this part of the spell of dresden infusing them with enough energy to be more whole or was this sort of a cinematic of you know like rachel just because she slashed rachel gets the slash and he's like this gout of like ghostly blood well, if we could like think back to Agal- Agatha ha- Hagglethorn, like she has a bit of a corporeal because her her axe was able mm-hmm. to to yeah. to Do hit damage. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I guess as that did is it just that he sort of has poured enough in with making. Well, and Harry said too, like part of what makes a ghost able to interact is if things that make sense with their death, right? Like Hagglethorn could act on the baby, she could act on the oh. strangulation, she could act on the axe. But she couldn't have, you know, done much in, like, a library throwing books or something like that. Right. it just had nothing to do with her torment and her agony and the reason she was a ghost to begin with, right? That's so I think, you know, the fact that they're in the mansion where they died with their abusers right there, that is what they are here to interact with. Right? I suppose, right? yeah. It, just, it always kind of surprised me. I just wasn't expecting, you know, I mean, I know, yeah, she took the, you know corporeal enough to of course you've got to throw in a cinematic spin on the climax the blow and, and save susan but yeah it's just always kind of like i was not expecting sort of the fountain of blood you know i figured mm-hmm. you just rip her open but you're a ghost it's there's no blood to spatter you know kind of but still regardless whether yes it is what it is any one of those it's one of those things of like you know or, rachel in her mind is a human so she herself would imagine her body being torn open and true, having ghosts yeah, you know you got- and maybe if rachel had been like a ghost longer she might like you know like forget that she's supposed to bleed but she's only had like a year and she's still used to the human like i bleed when i'm slashed so my oh. ghost is gonna bleed when it's slashed um, right um, maybe so in that um. attack rachel embraces bianca and uh, Dresden at the same time catches her with a spell, which basically <laughs> matches her through the floor and through it. And then that's where all the rest of the ghosts come in and pull her the rest of the way. Pile on and suck her down and I, that is it. I did like that when the ghosts would, the, like the initial ghosts that attacked her, like that they set her on fire. Like, yes. I thought that was such a neat Yes, because that was some of the, I'm assuming that was the one, because he does say like one of them, one of the oldest ones or something made their body out of flames when they first... So I always assumed it was something like that. It was like one of these ghost ones because he's like, as soon as it touched her, she like enveloped her in flames or whatever, right? So he imagined this like crazy ghosty fire monster, ghost thing. rider sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I guess, right? Yeah, it was cool. I liked it. Very cool. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so she's so down. She's, she's gone. She got her just yeah. d- desserts. And would have been would have been an amazing smoke. villain to keep around longer, but right. I like her better dead. I, I yes. think this is a great way for for her to have gone. Like, oh, I yeah. think la- her lasting two books is just fine. Well, just good. How do you like that uh, dress of fire now? <laughs> <laughs> now you're like literally uh, draped in flames and. Tell us, Harry, is she wearing anything underneath? <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not when the ghosts are done with her. The house begins to yeah. collapse in on itself. Dresden is finally just wiped out, and Susan has to grab him and help him out of the house. Yes, he's cool. Yeah, because he threw that last spell, and the ghosts got to that was her his, first. his Hail Mary. That was his Hail Mary, and exactly that was, yeah, between... I mean, which I get, resurrecting that many ghosts. Like he said, touch each and every one, because he even says, you know, when he first says, he's like, um... Um, the power that he poured into them, you know, making them nearly tangible, right? So again, as we know, this was a bunch of weak yeah, ass. They're all weak ass, with but four thousand of them. <laughs> yeah, and you know, okay, yeah, the barriers and all of that, but yeah, exactly. And he feels, I like this because at first you're thinking, like, was oh, that Susan? We just like feel like these these small but strong hands, and then he's like, and then Susan keeps you like, oh, that was Justine trying to, you know, that was Justine initially trying to get him up and getting, and then Susan thankfully just yeah. had the more strength to make it happen. But you know, but it's just because you know I remember the first time i read it just that when you saw like small but strong hands and i'm like oh there's susan and then it was like no 
and also Susan came along. With there, there was a really cool um, pop culture reference. At least, at least this is how I saw it. it might actually, I might just be seeing it there, but who knows? We had gone no more than a dozen paces when it collapsed with a roar. We turned and saw the house drawing in upon itself, sucked down into the earth, into an inferno of flame. Now, this to me is a direct reference to the Poltergeist, where the house implodes in on itself at the end. Well, I have not seen that movie. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't the do a lot attack, of horror. In, in that one, okay, the 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 family gets out of the house, and just as they get out of the house, the the whole house like vacuumed, it, yeah, okay. vacuums in on itself uh, all the way into the ground, and then sucks into nothing. Like it's gone. It's really like the Looney Tunes. It's hole. a really cool really? scene. Like, mm-hmm. But that's exactly what this reminds me uh, of. Okay. Is that right there? Yes, Jim Butcher. Referencing something? No. no. Never. <laughs> Get out of here, Tanzan. With his inverted back bust. Yeah. So Dresden uh, tells Susan he loves her, and she tells him she loves him I too. Love I love you. Shh, okay. And then he proceeds to lose consciousness. <laughs> As he <again>. does. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm spent. <laughs> not a Dresden book if he doesn't pass like out. So many guys out there. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I love you. I. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was great. That was good for good for me. Was that good for I, you? I'm um, gonna see. Yeah, yeah. I love you too, baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we're done. We just started a war. Save his girlfriend. Did you catch a break? <laughs> I want to cuddle him, but I'm just really, really tired. <laughs> just exploded a house, people. Give him a minute. Come <laughs> on, he's 25. He should only need a minute. Isn't raising the dead like against one of the laws? Well, well, if they're he, still dead, he he's not actually yeah. raising them. He okay. just, okay. Yeah, all right. Necromancy he's just inflicting dead on, on dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true because the vampires. Yeah, the vampires don't count as human. Just, yeah. That's that's how he that's how he um made that whole werewolf justification. Again, they're not technically humans. Technicalities, right? He didn't really sick them on it either. He just gave some power. They to got that the revenge. Got what the they do with it has nothing exactly. to do with me. Exactly, <laughs> right? He they're mad at Bianca. That has nothing to do with me. <laughs> right? I was just there. And yet, the war somehow still started. That's not fair. So unfair. So unfair. Uh, you know what? That damn Paulo. That darn Paulo Don witness. Paulo Ortega. Right. That stupid bitch really covered her bases. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he, I guess he did make it out because he makes another appearance. Yeah. Well, because you know, lucky for him, he, he didn't have any victims in this house. Yeah, or at least not enough that they weren't yeah, focused he's not directly really, on him. <laughs> Wait, he, you know, he is from the same court. Yeah. He's from the same court, but I think it's, he's it's not part of I her. think this helps shows that like just because she was making big names for himself, he was still way above her pay grade. He's like, I don't need to come and hang out at your stupid brothel. I got my own bitches. Right. Yes. Yeah. He was, he was not guilty by association. He was a visit- She's he was got- a visiting dignitary. Listen, we learn later on how the wizards are kind, of, how the wardens are kind of stationed <laughs> about the world. He had diplomatic immunity. Okay. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> Bitches, I am not. You go eat those cages. Stick your yeah. ghosts over there on those guys. I'm just a this piece of American over here. vampire problem. I got nothing. That's what I'm saying. Like we'll wiz- we'll wizard out. <laughs> we'll figure out later <laughs> how the wizards are like. How the wardens are stationed. Every warden gets their own demographic. Kind of yeah. City geographical demographic. But and like the Jeez. vampires do as well. But we don't understand exactly to their extent. So did Bianca have all of America? Or did she just have the um, East? Midwest? <laughs> Midwest? <laughs> like. No. Just the Great right? Lysarian. But we do yeah, know, right. or we will learn, that Paulo's got, like, all of South America as his domain sort of a thing, right? So, yeah, he's like, you, I don't need Bianca's Chicago brothel. I've got <laughs> yeah, exactly. wherever the fuck he is. Yeah, I would say based on that, that, yeah, there's probably, again, another higher up that would maybe have, you know, sort of the Americas or the North America or, you know, but, yeah, Bianca... Definitely she wasn't. Had her I don't, yeah, she wouldn't have had all of like North America yet or anything like that. She right. wasn't that, but a chunk. But anyways, point being, high up enough, she felt good to take on Harry. Not high enough to succeed. Exactly, and fade to black. <laughs> Thank you to our Patreon subscribers for your generous support. It's people like you who help us to do what we do. If you're not yet a Patreon subscriber, sign up today and get a fuck ton of bonus content, kick-ass merch, behind-the-scenes outtakes, and more. Sign up today at www.patreon.com slash rambling. Chapter 39 Dresden recovers in the hospital while Kravos's many victims recover as well. Susan stays in contact with Harry, but no longer comes to see him. Dresden dedicates his time to finding a cure for Susan. Yeah. 
Yeah. So apparently he comes too. <laughs> Finds himself at the I'm, hospital sharing a room <laughs> with Charity. I, I regard it as one last sadistic jibe of whatever power had decided to make my life a living hell that the burn ward was full and I was given a room to share with Charity Carpet. <laughs> Karma's a bitch, right. hey, Harry. I wonder just because they knew each other. Would you mind? Michael's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Mike would be all oh, my two favorite people right here in one room. Oh. Yeah. Charity gives him death glares. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> Imagine you're just trying to recover and there's some lady in the corner with a voodoo doll specifically against you. <laughs> die, 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 die. <laughs> Good thing Charity and Michael are so devout and she doesn't believe in voodoo dolls. Otherwise, <laughs> Harry's <laughs> in trouble. Oh, God, yeah. <sighs> so the baby recovered, which is great. So, yeah, this is what we, I think, we we alluded to at an earlier when we were talking about whether all these people would just snap back or whether Harry had all that power or where it went. Um, we were kind of talking about that in the last episode and that, that if he took all this power, like, where did it go from, like, Murphy and the baby and Charity? And, but apparently most of those people got that back, so Harry just managed to hang on to Cravo. Maybe that's it. Maybe if it doesn't have anywhere else to go. So, like, everybody else that were, like, living people... Had a vessel to return to. Had a vessel to return to, got theirs back. And since Kravos was already dead and didn't have it, and whatever else he may have stole it from or killed or whatever, Harry got to retain all that power and squish that into his little Play-Doh mold. So he still levels up, though? He still yeah, levels up. Because he still, levels he's, up, he's still but took all the Kravoses, but he's The not victims keeping... who are dead, Harry gets the power. The victims who are still alive oh, get right. their own power Yeah, Because so, the dead aren't getting their shit back. Yeah. They're dead. They're, 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 yeah. Ah, I see the So Murphy gets her bite back and <laughs> Charity gets her bite back, and the baby gets his bite back, but... Sorry, Harry still got you had to go and die before I could save you? That's on you. Yeah, that's <laughs> on you. It's, that's Should have held on a little longer. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, so we find, we find... So, yeah, we're gonna name him Harry. And Harry's like, oh, Michael. Harry Carpenter? <laughs> what this kid ever do to you? Wow, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> Made me feel good, and they kept the name. Yeah. Oh, very cute. So, <laughs> yeah... Harry, Michael makes Charity his baby after Harry. kind of grudgingly about it. But, but still did it but anyway. But still did yeah. it. So she, yeah. She, be careful, Charity. You can't, you you, can't show a moment of weakness you, with Harry. That's right. Yes. So Guess Michael and Fourth Hill. me and my baby and my husband. So Michael and Fourth Hill um, kept vigil over Harry while he recovered in the hospital, too. And Michael has his sword back. Yeah. Yes. Nobody says anything to him the whole time. He's in the hospital with his sword. <laughs> and, like... I don't know, like, this whole house collapsed on itself, and what, like, Michael just pulled it out of the stone, and like... No, he had it, because Thomas brought it back, remember? Oh, yeah, I fully forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I'm like, so the whole house collapsed on itself, yeah. and like, just among the rubble, like, Michael walked up and found it. The like, Lord works in mysterious yeah. ways. Right, the house yeah. just crumbled <laughs> around it and left this sword. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, that's feature. what he did with Arthur. <laughs> right, because he left them the, the Never Never. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I totally yeah. forgot. Yeah. He did. Yes, yes. yes. Right, he did right, not right. have to dig it out of the rubble, thankfully. And Harry, thankfully, had collected all his doodads on his way out, so he didn't have to go searching through the rubble to collect his skull or anything. That was very useful. (laughs) Very. I was going to be able to have it all nice and neat there, because it would have taken him forever to search that place. So Harry confesses to Michael that he's worried about the repercussions of his actions. And Mike, Michael basically tells him that he he might he this might be a repercussion great. a repercussion of others' actions. Yeah, I I really do and again just the way Marsters reads this and everything. It was I like that, you know, because he's like, I'm not a philosopher, Harry. He's like, but sometimes you get what's going around. Sometimes you are what's going around. So I think it's a little bit of both because because he unfortunately does cause a war. So he is well, going to have repercussions. And yes, there are some but things that are still going to come back around to Harry. This is a really great moment for, for Harry not to self-flagellate himself, at least yeah, for five minutes. This, well, exactly, right? It is a sm- And again, coming from Michael of all people, right? Then you sort of like that holds a lot of weight. and um, And yeah, it's like... Again, you didn't really kill any of the innocents. That part's not on you. And you took out a lot of the monsters that did harm. And you gave closure to a lot of the souls that were already there, you know, from years past in that, right? Because, again, now that those ghosts have the power and did it, you've got to assume that they've all finished and moved on and, you know, whatever, right? So, 
I mean, yeah, it was an act of destruction, but it was also an act of, like, release and everything for them, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, it's like, yeah, you did bad, but you did it in the name of... And I mean, like, even that, right? Like, the... (laughs) the, the, uh, What does Leah say to him? Um, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Like, you know, Jesus was all about the peace and the love and love thy brother and beg God you know, by all rights, was a big, scary, fearsome creature, too. It's like... That whole whole Old Testament is pretty brutal. (laughs) He totally promised not to do that Noah's Ark thing a second time. (laughs) Right? But, you know, but this is it. It's like, hey, you toe the line, you do what's right, you got an everlasting paradise. If you don't, I will smite your ass. And take that serious, right? So it's like, this is... You know, Harry maybe did a little smiting here, but you know, sometimes, sometimes violence is called for in the right. <laughs> but does you have a right to do smiting? Luckily for Harry, there's, a, well, there's the New Testament, which <laughs> saves his butt. <laughs> well, there you go, right? But oh, that was oh, handy Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a new deal. We, we got to rebrand, guys. <laughs> We're going into a new age. You gotta make it work. You gotta. So you know, sometimes. Yeah, we had to find out that Michael um, was, <laughs> was that they were able to escape the never never. But Thomas had broken them through into a gentleman's club, <laughs> a house of sin, as Michael puts it. Flesh pit. He's like, hey, I'm not a wizard. It's just whatever resonates. It's like a house of sin, a gentleman's club. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great comedy moment. I really like it. (laughs) Right. This is, yeah. So Murphy comes out of her spell within a couple of days, feeling a little better. Now, honest to God, physically feeling better. If you are out there in the world and you don't like Murphy and you've only read Stormfront, fine. You don't like Murphy and you've only read Full Moon, fine. But you've read Grave Peril and you don't like Murphy? What's wrong with you? Because this whole moment here is just like... This is who, like, this is Murphy, and this is Harry, and this is Murphy and Harry. Yeah. And it's just like, dude. Yeah. How do you not like Murphy? Right. Yeah. She's well, I think this was probably the first time when I was reading it like, that I was like, oh, she didn't have to do it. She didn't have to do any of that. Like, Yeah, she goes to the thing, and then she's, you know, you get that vulnerability from her where she's like, I couldn't stop him. I tried. And Harry's like, yo, I barely managed, you know, and like... A lot of other wizards that got sucker punched like that wouldn't have been able, you know, like, I just got lucky because people wanted to taunt me and tease me along kind of a thing, right? Um, but he's like, we beat him. He's there. We're here. And she's like, yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, and he's like, hey, come on. Oh, yeah, this is, I guess when he gets the sucker punch thing. But um, yeah. but then the, the silence, right? When he realizes that she stopped talking because she's crying. And he would hear it in her voice. But the rain, because it's the typical... You know, open grave yeah. in a cemetery pouring rain. <laughs> and, but, like, like the only people who are at this funeral is the grave diggers, Harry and Karen. Yeah, an like official crap. came and, to... Uh, yeah, the official came to whatever, like... Do the official blah, 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 whatever. your dad, rest in peace, and left. Do you think they did this for, for closure, or why do you think they attended? Because it's kind of strange that they would attend the funeral. So... So, for me, I think, you know, as much as it's closure for them, Kravis's whole thing was, like, unresting souls. And they came to just, like, you know, give Kravis Dude is his dead. Rest. He's in there. He's staying. <laughs> Make sure he's put to be. Sure, sure. Salt the body. But also, at the same yeah. time, it's like his whole thing was, like, these vengeful ghosts who were left loose in the world. I think giving acknowledgement to his, fut- his funeral was just a little bit more, like, lay the spirit to rest. Whatever emotional okay. attachment is there, like, here, two people have come to your funeral. You're Maybe, not... Maybe, but... See, I don't know. I didn't take that. A lot of his was... Like, again, I always thought they did more as a necromancer, which was, like, raising... Just to make I mean, sure he doesn't he come up. up a lot I'm of people, sure but, that that was a total. But I mean, other again, thing. all those people too. I mean, all those kids he would have murdered. I'm sure had funerals, and their spirits apparently weren't laid to rest. So, I don't know that. Yeah, you know, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe I don't. That's I just. I just don't know. I think that, like that was yeah, sure. The way I, I think for it. like Harry and um, Murphy, just to double check that this guy is really truly in the ground, sure. But I still think you know, like the fact that they were just like, listen, like maybe yeah, like this is you know and. Yeah, sure. Like, also just, like, for themselves, like, just put an end to it. Like, this was a fucking hard week. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. And months. Because it was, a sure, it was really a him. sheer trauma for both yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, w- I would say, I think more my perspective of it for Murphy is that facing your fears kind of a thing. You know, that, that you know, like, we didn't really get to see much of it here. Things have been alluded to, but we will 
find out sort of in times to come where we find out a little bit more of what it was that Murphy went through in this experience, right? So it hasn't sort of been laid out for us in black and white yet. But, you know, just, again, given her comments and stuff here, right, where she's like, I couldn't stop him, right? You know, this was a huge violation of her person and everything. And um, um, that, I think, is just that, you know, getting back out and facing it. Like, fuck you, you're not going to stop me. You're not going to make a victim of me. And I will come to your damn funeral and I will make, you know, and then that sort of a thing, too, I think has always sort of been, for me, part of what it was with, with Murphy and that, that she's like, I'm not going to let you mm -hmm. stop me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know. Making it the last stand in a way. Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm here, you know, it's your... Yeah, because she wasn't conscious for the, any of that sort of fight back, so this is probably her way of being like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right we won. a moment of closure and mm -hmm. facing it and seeing for herself that he's yeah i don't know uh, so while they're at the uh the, they see the headstone while they're at the graveyard so uh, kravos got a plot this right? is why <laughs> right i was like okay i guess it's convenient for to have it sitting waiting to go up and murphy to see it and, and bring on this but at the same i was like how the fuck does Kravos get a spot in Graceland? Like, who did he, like, did he dug up the body that was there before? Oh, right? <laughs> like, that part is a little bit like, I'm like, okay, we already figured this out last time, yeah. and I don't know that there's a lot Bianca's of... got so much money that she can get Harry Plot no problem. But yeah. Kravos, if you, yeah. what's that, like, that, that Jim Jeffries joke? Well, uh, they... Jim Jeffries joke is like, if you've got $30,000... You don't need to kill people. You're a great little saver. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess she knew that he was going to die, so maybe she just planned ahead. Oh, well, she was, was that part she, of the Maybe she got a two, nice. two for one deal. <laughs> that makes sense why they're so close. Because I looked up where Inez's grave would be, and first of all, unless Murphy's just pushing up through the grass, there's no reason she should see this from the sidewalk. Well, it does say that it's ready. Um... Next to a waiting plot. Oh, next plot. to a waiting plot. No, it is. Yeah, like Damn it. I was thinking for a second that it was no, just there like, waiting to be installed, but you're right, they are going past. Yeah, these. like, it's at the spot where yeah. it should be, but, like, like it, it's not very far. It's only the second row over from the grave path. So you yeah. could s easily see Inez's thing, but yeah. just a headstone in the rain. I'm well, like... Maybe they're cutting through. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you just really wanted to point <laughs> it out. Serious, serious, not that like is. Yeah, yeah, not serious. Right? So, yeah. But even that, it's more written as the fact, like, they accidentally stumbled upon it. And yeah. I was just right. like, Harry Dresden, he died doing the right thing. What the fuck is this? And he's like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yet, not today. But yeah. Not today, Satan. But that brings up another yeah, point. Right. Thank you. Okay, so I like that, Bianca. <laughs> Traditionally speaking. Thank you, Del Rio. <laughs> all grave plots are about six feet, eight oh. feet to include the headstone. No, six feet, because you'd put that over part, right? So, like, every grave plot oh, is roughly feet. spaced out to be about deep. six feet in length, right? Sure. Yeah, six feet down, but let's right. say about six feet wide across, just to accommodate everyone, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like... Harry needs a double line. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, though. I'm like... I'm like... Like, he just gets part of Inez's, because she's just... Like, half. <laughs> Inez was just, like, a five-year-old, so, like, he just, like, curl around into her space, <laughs> like... Because, like, it's just funny to think, like, like... She's got like such <laughs> tiny space, and then Harry's, there's just haze next to it. Harry's to like, just like in an L shape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got so, Yeah, he's dead anyways. Who cares? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is. We find out that Lydia is taken care of by the church, and she's been relocated, like some kind of witness protection program. <laughs> yeah, the Catholic Church has the equivalent. Of, uh, Go <laughs> find someone who believes you. <laughs> uh, Hopefully, she doesn't have to make too many more predictions. Barbara, somebody. <laughs> Yeah. I think she had problems before Kravos and Bianca. <laughs> She'll keep having them. But maybe the church can help if she actually is willing to get the <laughs> They've help. got a warning label, no matter what, to believe what she says. <laughs> <laughs> Even still, people are like, um, <laughs> probably not. Anyways. So Thomas sends Dresden a thank you letter for saving Justine, courtesy of a naked Justine tied in a bow. So yes, yeah, sends Justine with a note. I'll let you guess where the bow was. <laughs> Hopefully and it was then, a big bow. Oh, well, hopefully. It doesn't really <laughs> sound like it was... Sounds like it would have been chilly to we're making that delivery. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. Oh, no, we're, no, it's still summer. We're still summer. We No time has passed between this, so maybe she's fine. But it is interesting here, too, where he talks about 
you know, like, she's pretty enough. He's like, you know, this is the ick factor of sharing her with, like, a sex vamp or whatever. He's like, I didn't take the girl. But he's like, um, she's pretty enough and sweet enough when she wasn't walking the razor's edge of an organic emotional instability. He's like, but I can really hold it against her. Plenty of people have to take some kind of medication to keep stable. Lithium, supermodel, sex vampire, whatever works, I guess. <laughs> so I guess... Justine has stabilized out a little bit again and is doing well to be back with Thomas. So and was also grateful enough to deliver this note to Harry. To deliver, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That she apparently had no problem with it, and uh, um, yeah, that Harry's maybe learning to accept the alternate lifestyle there a little bit. That you know he was worried about Justine, but now. Maybe she. I don't know now. everything. I don't know everything. I have seen the other side of her not being with him, and I. <laughs> Jam, the- girl, you really need a sex vampire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I get a prescription for that? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Anyways, so Susan keeps contact via phone with Dresden while he's in the hospital. Yeah, she calls every day. Yeah, it's not long. He finds out that she's moved and is unable to make contact with her. I know, he's like cursing he does, and he gets out, like, heads to her apartment, and she doesn't live there anymore. Mm. <laughs> like, wow, being, rude! Yeah. <laughs> like, your girlfriend just packs up and moves within, like, three, four days yes. a week. I don't know how long he was in there for, but... He uses a spell to go find her, finds her on the beach. Mm-hmm. And, by the way, how much do... Was it just the 12-ish hour? Yeah, I guess, because he took... Sorry, going back to, to Jonathan recovering from this mushroom poisoning and that... So he'd taken it just before he went to Beyond, because then that was 12-ish hours before he was done being tortured and woken up. And then I guess the whole thing. So I guess he still would have made it within his 18. 16 yeah. or 18 yeah. hour. I was going to say, he's kind of pretty fine there, but... He probably wasn't like doing was good. Prob- yeah, I was like, wouldn't he be, like, mostly liquefied by then, Dresden? Just saying, I mean, who knows? Maybe he had to stay in the hospital a good while to recover from <laughs> supposed to be in the burn ward. The they burn- don't mention anything about the I know! Poison. That's the only thing that I always yeah. find, like, somewhat um, unsatisfactory about the wrap-up of this book. We're like, you made this big deal about this horrible poison that could kill him in anywhere from, like, 2 to 20 hours, and then it's just never mentioned again was like, okay, yeah, I know he flung fire around, but honestly, it sounded like he was going to have a lot more problems with the mushrooms than the fire. Right, it must have been Maybe that. this is more time-traveling things. Right. Ooh, Ooh, maybe, like, Leah paused it, and then one day she's going to snap it back on. By the way, you didn't jump on it in the last chapter, and I was expecting you to, and then I obviously forgot about it, but that, that get your hands off my girlfriend, is that the, the moment? that you've been alluding to all book that you didn't jump on at the time. I mean, there's the one at the party. I guess he could have made no, it. No, t- it's, it's the one at the party. Because I could have been that too, the also jumping into going with the... Uh, because if he had actually made the decision to, to walk l- away, let, then there would have been Susan a war. Burr. Yeah. Um, it is already confirmed it was the party moment. Oh, it was? That Like, Jim Butcher is confirmed. Oh. It was the party. Oh, okay. Well, fine then. It was saving Lydia. Oh, okay. Okay, so anyways, mm-hmm. moving right back along. So, yeah, she doesn't live there anymore. She He can't get a hold of her at work. So he finally resorts to cheating. <laughs> yes. He does a tracking spell. Because thankfully she'd left, like, a brush and stuff behind. So he had some hair candy. Yeah. Finds her sunbathing. Yeah. Learns that, that uh, Thomas and Justine have been educating her in the ways of the vampires. So this, on the one hand, you're like, oh, that's cool. Because she's like, yeah, I talked to Thomas and Justine. And, they, and then you're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait a second, back up. Thomas, the one that kicked you into the morning and made yeah. you? And now you got to go to him and be like, so how's all this work? I'm like, and he doesn't even and, know fully because he's white, not red. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he knows a fair bit about but it. But still, she doesn't have much other concrete I know, supernatural resources you, beyond Harry. I know, but I still don't but think it, Thomas would be the guy I turn to. makes you wonder, like, does she not know? Does she not really remember with the haze and the trauma of all of that? You know, that. Because I'm thinking if you know Thomas is the one that pushed you, you would be like, Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. I don't care. If I what you choose have. between calling up Thomas or Harry, I think Harry would have won the draw there. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. she probably would have dug up some some vampire flunky and like beat it out of him, and then <laughs> you know staked him or something before she would have gone to Thomas to get. That's. I mean, again, it's one of those well, things that gloss what... over it and forget about it in the rereads. But I'm like, man, what? And that might be just just showing how much she wants to avoid Dresden because of like that he, she he brings out this thirst in her, like that she like, this yeah. hunger rather. I, yeah, so she's, she's afraid, really and she doesn't have a lot of. Could have phone for that too. 
But yes, I just mm -hmm. found it very, like, again, right? I'm like, we all just supposed to forget this. Because again, I've said it, I like Thomas. But Even I at did. that point then, I'd be like, in front of the mirror, like, you know, the whole Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary thing. I'd be like, Leah, 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 anyone, anyone, anyone? <laughs> yeah, I'm not right. calling the guy who kicked me in the chest and turned me into a vampire. Well, kicked her in the back, but yeah, no, exactly, but... She's got that little tape Anyways. recorder. I'd been like, Mavra? <laughs> what other names did I hear on this? Anyone but Thomas. <laughs> right. Is there a Fairfax out there? <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, that. Yeah. She's in a little bit of a rock and a hard place, really. But yes, she, yeah. yes, yes. But they kind of told Still. her so. And yes, he finds her out on a beach because the sun helps. She can sort of forget during the day in the sunlight, but the nights are hard. And she has to lock herself in. And then we get this tragic moment a very very sweet moment i still love you where where harry asks susan to marry no good at this. and she says no Oof. she's very sweet about it though i mean she doesn't fling it back in his face figuratively or literally yeah. or anything like that she does set the boundaries and says that do not not come find her again yeah. she, and she pieces out I'll she call needs. you so, yeah, he said he'd brag to Kravos like he could do anything, you know, if he knew it was coming, he could fight in his dreams. But this all, this all took something out of him, and he's been having a lot of nasty nightmares. Right. Uh, it's so sweet that Mr. Comforts him. And Sleeps Mr. on his legs, Comes make sure he feels safe. Hers and, yes, the cat, the dread cat, mister. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but, yes, and even Bob tries to... Tries to get in a little bit of concern for him. Yeah, because Dresden is really consumed at this point of finding, like, researching vampires, and figuring out how to get a cure Susan cured. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's not really having it, you know. But Bob eventually gets through to him a little bit because he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, the council sent a notice. Hmm. So uh, we get confirmation. The council's at war. Paris and Berlin went into chaos almost a week ago, and the council is coming to Chicago for a meeting. Right. Sets up the next book. Boom. Sets up the next book. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like, they're going to want to know what happened. And he's like, yeah, I sent them my report. I only did what was right or as close to it as I could manage. I couldn't let them have her, Bob. I couldn't. It's like, I don't know if that'll hold up. Well, it has to. And then Michael shows up with a care. Michael and Murphy, Murphy. show up. Right with a care package for him and drag him away a little bit and sort of make him, you know, re-enter the world a bit. And yes, talk to your friends for a moment, have some soup, <laughs> shave, apparently. Michael pointedly had a razor in there. <laughs> so, right, but it does, again, just so few words, and it gives you a really good picture of how obsessive and whatever that Harry is not looking at. He's not eating, he's not sleeping, he's not bathing himself, he's not shaving, he's, you know what I mean? Like Very single-focused, yeah. Single-focused, single-minded, one track, just very... Like you say, all consumed and getting obsessive with this, right? Which is also just heartbreaking in its own sense. So, so I didn't realize that Michael and Murphy knew each other, at least until this point, that they come with a care package. Yeah. Well, they did work with each other on the Kravos case. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that, um, yeah. 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 So, yeah, but, um, whether before Even if they don't know each other that well. And, yeah, like, Michael Murphy and um, Dresden are not really um, presented as, like, you know, the golden trio, like Harry Potter. The Three and Musketeers. <laughs> three Musketeers, even Percy Jackson, Grover, and Annabeth. Like, yeah. they're not the same three fighting crime against the world. It is generally just Harry and Murphy or Harry and Michael. Yeah. But these are his two best friends in the entire universe. These yeah. Are the two people besides Susan who cares about him the most. Yeah, and again, right, you could see under the circumstances and that, right, I could see Michael, you know, like, hey, have you heard from him? And Murphy being like, no, not really. And the, you know what I mean? Like, you know, even if Murphy wasn't necessarily the first one to, you know, I could see again Michael being that sort of... We're both capable of our own um, the, the, style the of steamrolling. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, of... Mm -hmm. Of him, sort of, again, just the basic concern that Michael is and the family man and all that kind of stuff. Be like, hey, have you heard from Harry lately? I haven't heard from him. You know what's going on? No, okay, let's go. And Murph being like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's evident. Stupid dumbass, probably. He like, does have <laughs> a really good support system. Yeah. He does, yeah. Well, and yes. there's um, another uh, moment in there, too, when he explains that, like, like, just because Bianca's gone, like. You're not safe. It, like, 
Chicago has gotten darker. He's like, anyone with an ounce of magical talent right now is not going out. Yes, even all the have-nots. It's like anyone who knows to be afraid is deathly afraid. Whatever's happening in Chicago is really bad right now. Yeah. Whatever sort of vacuum power that that, Bianca left. Yeah. Well, and then it's not even just entirely a vacuum because it started a war. So that's it, is that the vamps are out to get anybody with Mm -hmm. magical powers and might be a wizard or might be close to a wizard or know anything mm-hmm. about, right? So that's it, the other yeah, thing yeah, is he that... Says the pizza delivery guy tried to get him with a bomb. Like, it's like... Yeah. Which, yeah, we don't know that the, the pizza guy, but he just... But. the Yeah, somebody bombed his pizza. <laughs> that's just, like, not For cool. Real. That's just not cool. Council's gonna be furious, but what else is new? Susan doesn't call, doesn't visit, but I got a card from her on my birthday, Halloween. She only wrote three words. I'll let you guess what they were. The important I ones. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> no. I miss you. <laughs> sure. I love you. <laughs> sure. Fuck you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thomas dead yet? <laughs> <laughs> Kill that bastard. <laughs> Blood light, please. <sighs> I want your blood. Oh, that's more. Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Grave Peril. It's a doozy. Mm-hmm. It's sad. I do legitimately enjoy Grave Peril, okay? I do like it. I just... Yeah. It's a slow pace to go it's, through it. It's right? honestly... Yeah, it was like, almost six months. Yeah. And, like, again, he gets better and better and better and better as the books go through. He's got, like, I mean, like, he's credited with Grave Peril for having a lot in the series and for setting up a lot of what the tone is going to be for the books. But he's still not quite there to make it always interesting. Sometimes it's just a bit too much information overload and there is a lot, so yeah. much. And it's like, I like the lore, I love the world, but sometimes it's just like, God damn, right? And this Pick one is so cool, dark yeah. too. So you're getting such darkness and so so much lore and so much information. Right. And like like as hilarious as Harry will always be and as much as his quips, that end really droops for a while, right? <laughs> like there's just yeah, it goes a, a while there. before, you know, like even like when he's jumping between the Never Never and Bianca's basement and uh, Kravos's fight, like even when you're getting that quips with the bad guy, it's still just so heavy that it's like it's hard to yeah. be like mm-hmm. right. And it picks up a bit better. Even summer night when we get to that one, it's a fuck ton of lore <laughs> with a lot of goddamn action and go, 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 go. It's a, like, you know. Right. Well, and Butcher's really trying to set up that whole world that he hasn't really yes. necessarily yes. in the first two books. The first two books was just Chicago. But now he knows where he's going in this no, larger yeah. narrative. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. This is all the information that you need. Get away from for, him. For the next six, seven books, at least. <laughs> Longer. Well, this one's specifically <laughs> pretty much eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. But yeah, no. Nope. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> ride. It's good. Mm. Now we can all decompress for a few weeks and get rid of the feels. Right! Yes! <laughs> this is I it. guess we should say, this is our last episode um, for five weeks. Just five weeks. Just Whatever. five weeks. You gave a really long pause after this is our last episode. <laughs> we are taking a five-week hiatus to... Build up the bank. Catch up on our lives, do other yeah. shit. <laughs> we'll still be recording. Just and, yeah, we're still recording, but we're not publishing. Yeah. Yeah. So doing our research and doing our homework. <laughs> yes. yes. Some people went out and got different jobs and things and screwed up the whole schedule. So now we all got to figure out when we can all. What the fuck, Tanzan? I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Always her. Always the problem in this group. I tell right. you. Yeah. She edits out her problems. And that <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> so yes, um, our first episode back will be July first with Summer Night. Woohoo! Woohoo! Mm. See you all then. Yes. So yes, thanks everybody. Don't go away. Don't go away. Feel Our, free. Do some re-reads. Catch up on summer night. If you miss us, Re- say hello on Discord because we we'll be there. Yeah. All of our social media will still be going. Um, our Discord will still be active. Our Patreon will still be active. Yeah. Uh, Fingers for crossed. us talking to you and putting up videos and other dumb shit. Yeah. We're going to do shit in that five weeks, just not official episodes. Yeah, it just won't be full episodes every week anymore for a little five while. Five weeks, yeah. Just to, yeah. Right. But that's it, so woohoo! This concludes our episode 8.21, Settled the Score. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and mcanalys.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. <laughs>